Hello and welcome everyone to another tutorial on how to make mods for the game Space Engineers. In our previous videos we've looked at how to make a simple model and get that into the game, had a look at how to set up inventories and talked about things like interaction dummies and other elements that add complexity to your models. And in this particular video I'm going to talk about a quite complex model, but not as complex a model as people may assume doors. Now in Space Engineers we have three main types of doors. We have two main types of doors that I'm showing on screen here. I've rigged these up with animations in Blender to reflect how they operate in game. Now nothing you do with animation wise in Blender translates to the game but I just want to show you these two actions are hard coded into these door types. We have the main sliding door which allows you to have one or two parts that will slide left and right according to their subpart dummy name and then on the sliding door we have two parts that slide and rotate into the edges um, as per their subpart names as well these cannot be changed these are actions that the game will just perform automatically um, based upon how your model is set up now you can set up other types of animations in Space Engineers. We have these animated entity components now, um, which allow us to do simple rotations and sliding actions um, based upon some simple SBC code uh, that you can attach to any model. Um, inside the entity, I won't go into detail here, but inside the entity component file, uh, you'll find some green text if you're using the right kind of viewer and these comments will helpfully help explain some of the details here um, there is also a, a detailed breakdown from digi on the official space engineers modding wiki now for this tutorial because it's so much complex details when it comes to doors we provided numerous examples all of that will be linked in the description below uh, including basic setups for the vanilla doors um, so you can see how the main door types are set up in Blender um, for you to learn from. This is the door type that I'm going to focus on for this tutorial. This is the advanced door block type. The neat thing about advanced door block type is that it can have some very customized animations and sounds and uh, be a lot more versatile than the fixed animations that you have from the other two door types that I've just shown. Now this is the door uh, that I showed in game earlier. Um, it may look a bit intricate, um, but trust me, it's very simple to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch off those subparts and here we have our main door frame. We have our, a very simple mesh here where I've just created the door frame um, and attached to that we have a number of dummies. Everything else for this door is controlled uh, through dummies. So we'll start with this first dummy. So this detector advanced door, so this is the object that gives you the highlight that allows you to open the door. So in the game, when you, you, you come up to your objects and you mouse cursor over them and they highlight to give you some interaction, those are controlled by these uh, entity, sh these empty shapes of various names so this one particularly is the detector for advanced doors specifically works for opening advanced doors you can't use it on any other block type it's not going to work to open a standard door it's just going to be able to open the advanced door for the standard door we actually have a highlight empty called terminal um, a terminal empty will actually open all door types not just controlled for the for the terminal and you'll see in the empty settings, the objects properties for these empties will be listed the highlight object that is to be selected when you mouse over them. Setting these up is very easy because of the way that suit the Space Engineers Utilities gives us this field that we can choose any mesh object that's in our scene in order to highlight. And then it will add the suffix that is required for the game to recognize it as a highlight object, which is the underscore section and then underscore number. If we go back to our advanced door and we have a look at the properties of our highlight, 
Our highlight objects here are actually the subparts themselves. For this, you may want to achieve for um, the doors specifically, or if you have, if you are using one of those maintenance panels or other entity components that you would require highlighting of a subpart, uh, you can do that by instead of choosing a mesh part, you actually choose the subpart empty dummy for your particular use. As I mentioned, everything else for this door is controlled as a subpart entity. So we have our, our door left parts, we have our door right parts, we have our uh, little sliding bar parts, our spinning lock part. Each one of these is set up as a separate scene in Blender. Now I've called them subparts one through eight um, for ease of use, but each one of these consists of a mesh part in the main theme and a collision object. And that's very important. Your door will not work if each sub part does not have a collision object. So even if you think, oh, well, this, this particular part doesn't need to have a collision object. So if I was to look at, say, uh, my little sliding bolt here, um, there's nothing much to that. It doesn't need a collision object. Uh, it, it does need, everything needs a collision object. The game just operates in, in the assumption that your sub part needs collisions. So as we go through, we've got our, our main door parts. Uh, here listed as subpart one and subpart two. And in the, the main scene, these are my subpart door left and right. And as you see, they're attached through those empty elements. So in order to get a subpart into your main objects and to be linked to your main object, you use the create empty context menu. And if it's a standard door, we'll use a preset subpart. And you'll be able to choose here from door left and door right. But if it's a advanced door, you're more likely to be using a custom subpart so as not to get the confusion with just using door lefts and door rights. And so here we can give our custom name. So here we're just going to have whatever custom name that I need now. Once you have your, your name, it needs to be parented to your main object. Then you can choose the scene in which the mesh detail is going to come from. So I'm just going to choose that subpart one. And here we have that door section from the other scene. It wouldn't be Space Engineers if it didn't have some unique quirk about it that subpart scenes use a different coordinate forward direction then main scenes. In our main scene, we you often consider minus y to be the main forward direction. This is true of almost all blocks that have some directionality to them as to which may be the forward facing direction for that block or the direction in which action is to occur. When we look at a subpart scene, the forward direction is actually positive y. It's in the other direction. So this would create, where we make our, our, our standard link, a inverse orientation of those subparts. Counteract that subpart needs to be rotated 180 degrees on the z-axis. That will position our subpart in the correct orientation as to how it will actually appear in the game. And then it will operate as we expect from then on with respect to the in-game directions. So just to recap, creation of a door. We have a main mesh object for our main scene. We have a highlight empty, which can choose subparts or mesh parts to highlight for interaction and for action. And then our moving mesh are objects that we want to see perform some action in the game are attached via these subpart empties using other scenes from within the same blender file this brings us to the end of our model creation from here you'll be able to export in the usual way 
this video is getting a bit long so what I'm going to do is in the next part I'm going to cover the SBC setup and more finer details. Thanks for watching.